I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. In today's Inkscape tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can create your own custom coloring book designs. It's coming by request from Catherine Oliver. She says, hey, could you show how to create a color book page? I wanna design a butterfly with designs in its wings. That's very easy to do. We'll do two different methods. The first is gonna be trace bitmap, like you see here with these butterflies. There's actually a built-in feature that lets you extract the edge using edge detection. And the other method will be doing a Bezier pen trace over the shapes of your subject, and then you can drop in any design that you want inside. So let's begin. To get on the same page, go to File, Document Properties. I am on the A4 template, 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters. We're gonna work outside of the page space, but at least this will give us all the same scale. Let's start by bringing in our source photo. The first one is a butterfly from pexels.com. You download it and you drag it in from your folder onto the Inkscape workspace. You'll see a pop-up box. You wanna be image import type embed, DPI from file and rendering mode none, okay? And here is our butterfly. There are actually two different applications inside a trace bitmap that will work well. Go to path, trace bitmap, and you'll see a sidebar menu open up. The default will be on the single scan tab, detection mode brightness cutoff. In the preview area, you can already see based on the brightness and darkness of the image, it's gonna create this vector file when you push apply. And you can control how much brightness and darkness comes into play by sliding this threshold value. If you make the value smaller, you can see how it affects the output. Right now at 0.35, this is looking pretty good. I like this right side. And I'll show you how you can actually take the vector and mirror it to have both sides looking clean across the whole butterfly. The other settings for speckles, I have a very low value to smooth corners I have set to one and optimize, keep it low for now, hit apply. While it's spinning here, I'll make a note to say this file I actually brought in is only one megabyte. If your source image is very large, meaning file size large, it might be too much for Inkscape to handle and you'll get a timeout or a crash. This just actually finished. See if you can lower the image size before you bring it in. And if you want help with that, just let me know in the comments. I can show you some easy ways to do that. Let's pull out our new vector. Not bad. The reason it took so long, if you double click, do you see all these squares? These are all the different nodes that were just created by Inkscape. The first thing I'm gonna to do to clean up some of this is go to Path, Simplify. I'm not sure if you can tell, but it just wiped out maybe more than half of the different nodes. To clean up the image itself, when it's selected like this, go to Edit Paths by Node. You'll see the nodes again. You can bounding box around the nodes you don't want and hit Delete. Or you can beef things up if you don't like how this antenna is way too thin. The handles let you change the way the actual lines look. Let's reflect this good wing and get rid of the bad wing. With the object selected, I will do Control D, which duplicates it in case I make a mistake. And I'll grab the Bezier pen tool to draw a random shape around the good part. I always make my throwaway objects green and cut the opacity to remember it's a throwaway shape. I see the clipping shape selected. I'll hold shift and collect the design. Object, clip, set clip. There's many other ways you can do this. This way is just pretty fast. Rotate it around, control D, duplicate, and up here in the directionals, flip it horizontally, slide them together and give it a little twist. The antenna is kind of giving it away though. Let's bend this antenna. Now you'll never know. Group the whole thing, control G. And that's the brightness cutoff way for trace bitmap, but there's an actual better way that's more applicable for coloring books. It's gonna be the edge detection method. Let's bring in a more complicated design, this fish. And you can already see in this preview, it's seeking out where are the edges. And it's gonna bring that over into our vector object. We're on single scan detection mode, edge detection. On the threshold slider, let's bring it way down, almost to one or less than one. I'm down to 0.055. This looks pretty good. Let's see how this works out. For speckles, same as before, two. Smooth corners, one, optimize 0.20, and we'll hit apply. And there it is, that was a lot faster than the other one. This is actually looking pretty good for a first try. You can tweak this more if you wanna to try to get more of the scales. If you want it slightly darker, you can switch over to the fill and stroke tab and actually add a stroke. See how it looks darker there? Maybe that looks too busy. You can always reduce the size of the stroke style to 0.15. Something like this could work. Throw it on top of a white background to see what it would look like on a coloring book. Throw in some bubbles. What are we doing here? If you're curious, this is the spray can tool at work. I featured it in several other tutorials. Let me know if you want to see some more instruction on that. Let's move on. 
Back to Catherine's request where she's asking how do you actually fill the butterfly with a design? Let's do the Bezier pen method now. One more Pexel image. Thanks again, Pexels. Sweep it into Inkscape. I thought this one had an interesting shape. We're going to break it down into the top wing, the bottom wing, and then the body. I do have a dedicated Bezier pen tutorial if you want to check that out. It's a little bit tricky to learn, but the super basics, first of all, you have to set what it's going to do. We want Bezier pen to have on the fill and stroke tab on the fill. Let's make it green again and the stroke will be same thing, just a little bit darker. And to make it easier to see what we're actually tracing, we'll cut the opacity in half, something around 50. Here is the Draw Bezier Pen tool. The normal mode is this first one. Go over to the third one, create B-spline. Zoom in, click once, that will start your path. And when you keep clicking, it's gonna add a natural curve. Click around the perimeter and it doesn't have to all be one continuous shape. You can double click and it shows you how far you've gotten. And to continue, just hover over the last endpoint. It lets you keep going. When you get back to where you started, you can double click near the starting point to complete the shape or just go back to the first node and click there. There's the top wing. Let's do the next one. Start down here. Another trick, if you hold shift, it will make it be a hard point as opposed to always automatically making a curve. Sometimes that helps if you're trying to make a jagged point. Let's do a quick time jump here. I'm back to the starting point. I'll hit that original node, double click. I'll also point out this right here is rounded. You can change the settings under stroke style. For the cap, I have it on round. This is actually a join. The join's rounded as well. If you go to a point, see how it differs? I think round looks better for this. There's our wings. Let's make the body now. I think I'll do it in two parts so I can have two different patterns in there. Part one and part two will be this thing. Oh, and the antenna. For the antenna, I think we can freehand it. I'll go back to the original first mode of Bezier pen make a tall, thin triangle, go to path, object to path, give it a little bend, control D, duplicate that one. There's actually a path effect I like called bend that will help do this easily. We'll go to path, path effects, hit the plus down here on the path effects menu, you'll see this one called bend, and you'll see at the bottom there's a bend path, edit paths by node, I'll hit that, and by moving this bar, it will warp the whole thing. Maybe we'll use this one on the right. There we go, antenna, antennae, Antennae. Antennae. Anten Did I say that? Antennae. Antennae. Okay. Let's cheat and flip the wing around. First, I'll hit escape so nothing is selected. If I hold shift, I can create a bounding box that will only grab the objects inside of there. It won't take this background photo. I'll do control D to duplicate this and bring it away. We don't need the opacity cut, so we'll go back to full opacity. But we'll start by making the fill on everything full white and the stroke goes to full black. This antenna can go to the bottom. Select the top wing, the bottom wing, control D to duplicate it. We'll flip it and bring it to the other side. I'm gonna use some artistic license here and make the top part bigger, just so we have more coloring space. I like that. Now we can add any type of design we want inside of these wings and body parts. Here is the thumbnail for the mandala art video that we made previously in this channel. I happen to have this design right here. You can use anything. This method will work on any design you bring in or you create. Basically, we're gonna take the coloring book outline and each shape will be its own clipping object. So grab everything. Control D duplicates it. I'm going to change the fill to green just to keep things in order. And we'll cut the opacity a bit again, maybe down to 63. First, this top wing. When you have it in place the way you like it, you do have to make sure that the actual wing is on top. If you hold Alt, you can grab something that's beneath. Up here on the hierarchy, bring it to the top. So this is on top. I'll hold Shift. Got the design. Object. Clip. Set clip. Not bad. Now we can put this onto the coloring book piece. Same for the lower wing. We'll do a nice little time jump here. Why don't we keep the two antenna features the way they are? You don't have to import a pattern. There's actually some cool patterns built into Inkscape. For this body part under here, pattern, if you click on the drop down, there's lots of different choices built in. You could do checkerboard, stripes. There's one called wavy. Wavy's pretty good. We did it too fast. We have to actually keep the white body. Control D will duplicate it. Now I can go back and add wavy. Let's explore some more of those for this bottom part of the tail. Control D, so I have one on top. I think there was a good one. Pack circles. Why don't we just do a finger snap to fill these two? And there it is, coloring book butterfly, ready to be filled in with markers, crayons, anything you have in the real world. Thanks for the suggestion. And if you wanna learn step-by-step -step how to make this mandala type art, click on the thumbnail right here. See you next time.